Exodus 15, 19, in the Aztec Empire. It's one of the greatest civilizations to grace our planet in size and scope in history at this time. And it's also a time of ever-increasing expansion by the European community into the New World. The conquistador, Cortez, oh, uh-oh, Hernan Cortez, happens upon the Aztec Empire. And what he discovers is that though the community is ripe with wealth, they have things like gold and other precious commodities, what they valued most and what they prized more than anything, what was actually used as their currency was a food. And this food was known as cacao. All the chocolate in the world actually comes from this food. And the Aztec people, they were not silly. They knew that there was something special about this food. And they were very advanced in their use of it. They weren't making chocolate bars, they were making drinks out of it. And here's what Cortez had to say in his own words about the drink they called chocolate. The divine drink which builds up resistance and fights fatigue. A cup of this precious drink permits a man to walk for a whole day without food. Cortez brought cacao back with him to Europe, and he's not the first person noted to do so. That was actually Christopher Columbus. But it's during this time that things really took off, and it was not long before chocolate had spread all throughout Europe, and it was noted as a delicious food that brought incredible life and vitality to the body. And it was very prized in the, the French court and eventually made its way across the channel into Great Britain and launched the birthing of many of the famous chocolate houses, if anybody's ever heard of these. It was actually reigning supreme as a drink of choice over tea and coffee for a time period, which is really fantastic. Now, during this time, chocolate was still considered to be medicinal and very, very healing to the body. But where things went awry was another a commodity that the Europeans popularized and is actually used as a recreational drug, and it's called sugar. And it even looks like some other stuff. So, <laughs> now, with the dutching process, as well as the addition of sugar, this launched a huge industry, and we're still seeing the results of it today. So many different chocolate treats and confections and chocolate cake and ice cream and so many incredible indulgences that we've all grown up with and had a chance to experience. And the notorious chocolate bunny. Every Easter, I would try to get through one of these things when I was a kid, I never could do it. So I just thought that was interesting. So, um, so many different incredible ideas that have been brought forth using chocolate, some really delicacies, things that were pre pleasing to the palate as well as visually. And it really adds to the, the overall beauty of chocolate. And you know humans can get very creative with our use of chocolate. <laughs> very creative. But what was lost in all of this was the root of chocolate itself and what it meant to be gifted with this food and the heart of chocolate, which I hope to connect you with here today. Now, the Aztecs, they knew what our scientific analysis is just now proving today that there is something very, very special about chocolate, the likes of which borders on the miraculous. Chocolate, now I'm talking about the real stuff, raw cacao, C-A-C-A-O, not cocoa, okay, cacao, the real stuff. And I'm not talking about the cooked up, boiled, broiled, sugar added, guilty pleasure. The real food is where all the magic is. Chocolate boasts the highest source of antioxidants of any known food. And to get an understanding of what that means, because people hear this all the time, which get antioxidants is low, what does that mean? It's antioxidation. And your body is made very largely of minerals. And it's sort of like akin to metal rusting, okay, if that makes sense. And this food is one of the highest sources of antioxidants, which helps to buffer that or block that process from taking place. So we're basically talking about anti-aging in its truest sense. So if you want to stay young, eat some chocolate. You have permission. Also flavonoids, phenols, the highest source of magnesium of any known food. And magnesium is the number one mineral found in the human heart. And it's also the number one mineral deficiency in our modern society, coincidentally. 
and chocolate is literally a food that can help to heal your heart. One of the highest sources of chromium, and chromium is essential for regulating your blood sugar, as well as your overall metabolism period. Um, iron it has 313% of your RDA iron in just two tablespoons of cacao, cacao nibs. If anybody, who here has had cacao nibs before? Cacao. I'm preaching to the choir. So understand, it also has, but I know you're gonna learn some things you didn't know about chocolate, and hopefully you already have. Um, more vitamin C than most berries. And vitamin C is not only important for your immune system, but also for the building of your tissues, your skin, your hair, your nails. Vitamin C and sulfur transmutate to create your, your tissues, which is fantastic, and you can put a little mental note on that. Essential fatty acids, which are critical for the cell membranes, which are the brain of all your cells, so it's kind of important. Now, where it gets really interesting is that this food actually contains neurotransmitters. So we're talking about being smarter, okay? So we're talking about the synaptic connections, the neuro associations that are created in your brain, having the resources to make that happen more gracefully. This food has that. It's one of the only foods that has neurotransmitters. That's just, in and of itself, a huge, huge thing. Now, I know in my heart that the Aztecs they prize this food so much because of the hormones and the hormone precursors. Things like serotonin, which is that feel-good hormone. It's that stress defense shield that gets really brutalized in our current society a lot. But when you have a good amount of serotonin in your system, everything could be breaking down around you and you're just like, it's all good. I'll work it out. I'll be okay. But when you're zapped on serotonin, everything is just irritating as hell to you. And this is one of those foods, again, that can really help to heal that. Um, also, tryptophan, which is an antidepressant hormone. Anandamide. Ananda means bliss. So it's literally the bliss chemical. So when you eat chocolate, you get to feel bliss. You actually get to feel it. And one other thing, when you're in love, who here has been in love before? Come, nobody over here has been in love. That's the. <laughs> That's the in love, not in love room outside over the room over there. So understand, when you're in love, <laughs> he had two for everybody. When you're in love, that feeling that you have that anything is possible, that there's nothing else in the world that can stop you, that chemical feeling that you have is a high concentration of a chemical it's called PEA, it's a phenethylamine. And cacao actually has that bio, uh, in a bioavailable form. PEA is in this food. And it, I only know of two, and I'm a genius with this stuff. There's only one other food that I know that has PEA in it, and that's blue-green algae. It's hard to get people to eat blue-green algae. It's easy to get them to eat chocolate, okay? So this food is loaded, loaded with nutrition, and it's a sexy food. It is, it's very attractive. And what I've used it for, at this point, you know, my work has affected the health of thousands of people. And it just, when it came into my life, it made my job so much easier because I was able to deliver healing medicines in the, in the same breed that the father of modern medicine, Hippocrates, said, you know, let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. So take, for example, a food like, you know, if someone's dealing with a thyroid condition, you know, it's an underactive thyroid, I know that coconut oil is fantastic for your thyroid, it's a thyroid tonic. It also has medium chain essential fatty acids, which are great for instant energy, you know? But just to sit around and eat coconut oil, that's not sexy, that's not fun. But when you take, and I've done it before, it's not, it's not that fun. So, but when you take that and you put it in the blender with some chocolate, with the sweetener you like, with some other of these incredible superfoods, and you blend it up, you can actually enjoy getting well. You can feel good about it. As a matter of fact, you'll feel so good, you'll tell your friends about it, and they'll have some. Next thing you know, they'll tell their friends. And all of a sudden, everybody is feeling good and enjoying feeling good and enjoying being healthy. And it's not some psychological war. It's just like we're having chocolate drinks and it's all good. Now, who really ushered in, now understand, I use this in the same method that the Aztecs did, which was using chocolate as a deliverer of medicines, not chocolate for the sake of chocolate, okay? It, I hope that makes sense to everybody. It's a deliverer of medicines. The person who really brought chocolate to the forefront, cacao, in our modern culture, was a guy by the name of David Avocado Wolf. And he's also known as the chocolate pope. And 
I've had the pleasure of working with David a few times, and he's a brilliant guy, and I really appreciate um, him doing so, so much work and really getting these things out to the people. Um, now, so this is a little bit of time. The thing is that now you can go into a conventional grocery store and you can see the candy right there when you check out. And now you'll see like 65% cacao on certain popular candy bars. Does anybody notice this? It wasn't there before our whole lives. Now it's there and they're like, yeah, we got cacao too. But these are the same companies that were delivering things that were really damaging and low integrity to the body. So now when you see that, you want to be aware that like giving you a kiss with a stab in the back at the same time. You need to be aware of what's going on underneath everything. Because what's really damaging, what's extremely damaging, are the synthetic denatured compounds that are along with a lot of foods that we eat, like chocolate, the innocent root, cacao itself, the things that are added to it are extremely damaging. Take for sugar, for example, and it's usually in the form of high fructose corn syrup, which is a certified poison. And I wanted everybody to see this chart. With the increase in high fructose corn syrup consumption is correlated with the increase in our obesity crisis that we're dealing with. And if you don't know this by now, three-fourths of our population of Americans is certified overweight or obese. And I'm standing here today in a very historic moment where the obese category is actually overtaken the overweight category. So most Americans actually certified as obese. And we have to do something radically different right now. And it's possible by doing things in accordance with how, with how things actually work. OK. Now, it's not just taking a food and extracting something from it. Nature does not work that way. We can absolutely make an antioxidant extract from blueberries, okay? But it's the other cofactors, the phytonutrients, the phytochemicals, all the other things that make the magic happen for your body to uptake it and actually get it without these so-called side effects, okay? Because that's how nature works. Nature works in a holistic way, okay? And we've gotten away from that. We've really turned into a pharma pharmaceutical utopia of sorts. There's a big difference between sugar and sugar cane. There's also a big difference between high fructose corn syrup and corn, okay? When you take the, the syrup, the corn syrup, and just extract and deliver that anti-nutrient into your body, unabated by the work that would go into actually you doing it yourself, and just keep hitting that panic button over and over and over, sugar, sugar, sugar in your system, you're intrinsically going to disrupt your genetic expression. That's just the way it is. So I want everybody to take a look at these two words. Can anybody tell me what the difference between these two words are? One line. That's right. There's one line. All it takes is one molecule to be off in the food that you're eating to create a completely different genetic expression. Just one line. Same thing in computer science, you know, if you're coding. Just one symbol off in that line of code, you end up with a completely different thing. And you can get some of that gnarly dude stuff. You know what I'm talking The coders know what I'm talking about. I didn't know I was such a nerd, man. So anyways, all it takes is one molecule to be off. And we need to be aware of that. We need to start to understand that food is not just food, it's information. And beginning to ask the question, what is this food that I'm about to eat, being intelligent enough to ask, what is this food going to program my body to do? Is it going to program my body to express a diabetic condition? Or is it going to program my body to express higher cellular integrity and perfect cellular replication? But you don't have to sound that nerdy about it when you ask that question, but you get what I'm talking about. Being intelligent enough to ask those questions because it will affect you. Now, I want everybody to go with me on this. I had to talk about this. We know that lo eating local is really taking off right now, and everybody's kind of cognizant of that. Now, I want everybody to take a look at the bigger picture with me for a minute and zoom out a couple of levels. We're all now world citizens. We're world citizens, many of us, especially the people in this room. We're not just located in one place. And there are certain parts of the world where humans are populated that are unable to grow the food that is capable of helping us to express our highest genetic 
representation. You know, like we're in Las Vegas right now. We're in a desert. How many, you know, we can't get many different kinds of local food here. You know, just being realistic, honestly. So we absolutely want to employ the strategy of eating local. But I don't want people to have such a short-sighted view on things because people are very, very die hard for their beliefs. We're world citizens. We need to understand that. We need to incorporate that. But we also need to incorporate the use of these incredible superfoods that are out there that can really help to sure up that other end of the equation for us. Now, what's most important here is that we have to give back. We cannot keep taking from the environment without reinvesting in where our food is actually coming from. We want to understand this particular law. It's not a slogan. You are what you eat is a law. And everything you eat affects the way you think, it affects the way you feel, it affects the physical outpicturing of your body, it affects your, your consciousness, its ability to express itself, it affects your creativity. And we're here, this is a TED event, and bringing forth ideas that come from TED on vending machine food, we really have to up-level our stuff now. And this is a gut check for everybody. We really need to understand that the food that you eat is gonna fuel your path. Just think of the, where we can be at if we were eating noble things, okay? And laying off the whatever is coming out of the vending machine. And even, you know, somebody's business model could be um, health, making healthy vending machines happen. You know, I'm just putting it out there. I just thought of that just now. So now, as I mentioned, we, we've got to give back. And so invest in your local farmers markets. Invest in your local farmers. Invest in the indigenous cultures who are actually out there bringing these incredible indigenous foods and getting them into your body. We have a great opportunity in front of us you know, to, to consciously choose where we're voting with our dollar, because you do vote with your dollar and what you're investing in. Invest in co-ops. Invest in the organizations that are truly putting the power back in the hands of the consumer. Let the story that I've shared with you of chocolate show us how to get reconnected to what's real and natural. And I took you on this journey with me, not so that we can take a look at the problem and ask, you know, how did things get this bad? How did things get this way? Not so that we can go back and try to do things right, but so that we can begin something new with a greater degree of wisdom. Thank you for your time.